G'day guys and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in once again. In this video, we're gonna be talking about Lisa's car, the little Mazda behind me. So the time has come, we are pissing off the speedy wheels and Lisa's gone ahead and bought an absolute cracker set. In this video, I'm also gonna be talking about my first diff housing that I'm shortening. So diff needed to be shortened to shoehorn the wheels in it that I fitted. Um, we've retained the factory tubs. I didn't wanna go ahead and start cutting it up and tubbing it just yet anyway as um, the paint job on it is, is excellent. And um, yeah, just wanted to make the biggest probably wheel and tire combo fit that I thought would work. And um, I think we nailed it. So we're gonna go through this video, talk about the little diff shorten we've done, a little bit of a DIY home job that anyone can sort of attempt themselves with the right skill set, you can um, prove that you can get it done. So I'd like to thank Rod Tech as well for helping get those axles shortened, re-splined within a three day turnaround, which helped me get the diff done in, uh, in three days. Uh, and also a good friend Brett for his lathe work and getting the um, bearing ends machined up exactly how I wanted and um, within millimeters really. So yeah, once again, thanks for tuning in. We hope you like what you see. Like, subscribe, don't forget to drop a comment. Let us know what you think. And uh, for now, just got to finish off all the little cosmetic things on the car. We're going to tidy up some loose ends, fit some last minute badges and get the car ready for the dyno. And then we can head back up to the bend this time with the rotary and get ready to take it up for rotary revival. Cheers. As you can see, it's been covered up for some time. Picked up some front wheels a little while ago and the rears. Had some troubles with the rears, so I had to send them back, which they were had a little imperfection in them. So we've got that all sorted now, but finally picked up these to some RC comps. Absolutely amazing quality. Go really well against the car's chrome and paintwork. So they were set it off mint. Um, I'll just lift up the covers. It's been covered up for some time, but I'll go through the rears as well. Obviously, these are the wheels that are on it. Disgusting. And these are the wheels going on it. So we're running a 22550 um, Mickey Thompson ET Street R. If anyone's asking, these are a 15 by 8 with 4 inch back space. So probably would have liked to go 3 inch but not knowing how much room I was allowed to go with the leaf springs and factory tubs. Obviously, I'm not gonna tub it, so, because the car's already painted, didn't wanna cut any of the quarters, so, yeah. These are them. They're an RC comp, these are the hammers, I believe they're called, um, with a polished barrel, obviously. You can get them in black as well, but for now, I think, obviously, the polish will go really well against the candy red. I've had them sitting under there, so, I'll throw up a little video now of how they look absolutely amazing. over to here now and we'll go through what I've been doing with the diff so obviously I have ripped the diff housing out sat the wheels under measured them up roughly and in the meantime measured up how much needed to trim off the diff mark that out cut off the leaf spring saddles um, I've used this plate as a template which is dead center of the housing and measured out from that each way um, obviously trimmed the axle ends up I'll go through what I'm doing there with the ends and um, the welding procedure and what's involved with all that. So these obviously being the original leaf spring pads off of the diff housing. These sit on the diff obviously and then the leaf springs run underneath, located on a little spigot. I wanted to use these and keep these rather than make a new shock mount. I know that these work so unpick the welds, they come off all no worries. I'll clean those up, probably give them a quick sandblast and they can go on. This is the meat I've removed, roughly 47 mil off each end from the existing diff that was in it, which had already been shorned. So working with the original Hylux diff here, um, I've just picked up the axles from being shortened and re-splined. Um, and these are the ends off of the axles, which I've had just cleaned up quickly in the lathe, removed the old weld. And as you can see, I have had the inside machined down on both of them and then this is the, a bit of pipe which I've bought. It's roughly 60.5 on the outside diameter and it fits perfectly on the inside of the diff housing. I'll take it over here and show you quickly. 
So this fits in nice and snug to my diff housing and I'm gonna use this to my advantage for putting on my axle ends and keeping those in true. And I'll also use it to shove it in. I'll probably have maybe, I don't know, 30 odd mil, 40 mil hanging out and I'll use this as a backing bar once I gap the ends on, prep the ends of the um, diff obviously. And then I'll get a nice weld in there as well. And it'll be even stronger and stop the diff tubes from maybe pulling or bending. So just an added bit of durability to I guess putting the ends on and welding the diff when shortening it. Obviously I've never done one, so this being my first time doing it, I wanted to get it done in a hurry. So instead of sending it off to a shop and waiting months, I've got a deadline here to meet. So just gonna send it and hope for the best. Should get a nice weld on there. Got a good little prep on it. So 45, both the diff housing along with the ends and they fit in nice and tight, so. We'll roll with that and uh, get into it on this Friday night. So just coming back over to the bench now, um, those axle ends or the diff housing ends, I should say, I've just had those in the sandblaster and sandblasted inside and out, getting rid of all the old paint, um, cleaned them up and also just gone around and removed any of all the old, had a bit of gasket goo and, and they look like bearing, red bearing grease here and there, which the sandblaster doesn't like. So just wire wheeled that quickly hit it with some degreaser, get rid of all the sand. Obviously you don't want any sand going inside the uh, ends of the diff housing, especially where the, the um, bearing seals go, getting in with all the oil, it'll just destroy your seals and your bearings. So um, done both of them, they come out really good. Um, it's very handy having a sandblaster, so clean them up. Um, I'll probably worry about doing the leaf spring pads tomorrow. I'll clean them up. They can go on after the um, ends have all been welded as the weld is slightly under um, both pads. So for now, I'll just worry about getting these sleeves tucked in. Um, I might even do a drill a hole both sides of the diff housing tubes and um, we can plug weld those in place as well just to add a bit of strength. So yeah, I'll get into putting these tubes on, getting the... Uh, axle or diff housing ends in place, getting them all uh, marked out, angled in with the um, level and um, weld them on. Another thing before I forget, so I've had the thing over on the trestles, the diff housing, and just quickly put that bevel on the end for the prep of the weld. And I've just come in 50 mil each end of the weld where it's gonna join. And I'm gonna put a hole through the diff tubes, top and bottom on both sides, just so I can plug weld that sleeve that I'm gonna insert through the ends of the housing and that'll just add a bit of strength to, I guess, adding no movement inside the diff housing. So just thought I'd make a note of that. Is it a right way? Is it the wrong way? I don't know. Like I said, haven't done one of these before, but in past experience, that's just something that I think I would like to do to have a bit of strength in there. So yeah, we'll continue on. Right, onto the next part of the piece now. I've just removed the diff housing from over in the vise, put it up on the bench, just up on jack stands. Um, this is the time where I'm going to spend a little bit getting the nice and straight, get it dead level. Um, I'll get my ends um, and also my inserts, which I've had spun up. I'll, I'll put them in. So I'll, I'll spin the camera around now and I'll run you through just quickly what I'm going to do. So just got the diff up, obviously on the bench, on the stands, just roughly. I'll use my dead flat piece of steel, which I've got bolted to the, obviously the diff center facing. Um, I'll stick the spirit level on there, use that to get that nice and level. But um, obviously you can see when I had the, the tubes that are in the axles or in the diff tubes now, I marked them out with chalk, which you can see roughly there. I've got them just hanging out. Um, and obviously they're the spot weld or the plug weld holes that I've put in the um, diff tubes. I'll try and show you roughly. So I've marked, I can't remember which part, the piece with the slot in it, which I put here can just see is the mark the very top of the diff housing so I know that I don't fuck it up which I hope I don't but it's hard with one hand I'll just try and hold the diff housing and slide that on and that is perfect fit nice and tight I didn't want it loose so there's no way of putting the ends on and having them cockeyed or whatever I wanted them nice and true so I'll get that all level up with the center these are sit dead level with the center, obviously, in the housing. And then, obviously, after once we've moved on from welding this all out, I'll move on to doing the leaf spring pads as they go on with the diff on a certain angle for the pinion. So we'll go through that later. And uh, in the meantime, 
get stuck into putting these ends on, getting them true, and then getting into welding it. Alrighty, got the diff all set up, happy where I've got it. I took a measurement before, I cut the diff, and obviously after, I needed to remove 94 mil overall, which is roughly, yeah, what, 94 mil? So, what, 47 mil off of each end, and I've come in and taken that off of each end, used my center mark, which I've got, and it's, you know, within half a mil. So, I'm gonna go ahead now, make sure every end's dead level. I'm gonna tack it, get it all into place and then we can go on and run some straight edges across the face this way um, and check it front and back side with the tape measure just to make sure that they, they haven't moved. So let's get into tacking it all into place and um, go on from there. Alrighty, so just finished tacking up all those ends up with the diff up on the bench, nice and level. Got all the ends true, both long ways and the other way as well. Putting a straight edge across it and measuring the diff front and back. Um, it's not even within a mil, so I'm very happy. Just brought it over to the trestles now. What I'm gonna do is whack a quick coat of anti-spatter just over the ends because where it's been sandblasted, that spatter is gonna to wanna to stick to wherever it's been blasted. So um, it's important to not get a nice uh, hot weld in there make sure it penetrates, but I don't want it to be too hot. So I might even get a cold rag as well after it's welded. So um, those axle ends or the, the tubes just don't bow. I don't want them moving too much without obviously having a jig to check it all. So um, being so short and those inserts, hopefully will stop a bit of that um, bending from happening. But yeah, I'll get into welding it and also doing that plug weld. And um, yeah, if you don't have any anti-spatter, you can also use cooking spray like canola spray, that works just as well. So just a little fact if you don't wanna, or don't have any welding anti-spatter. So yeah, let's get into it. Alrighty, so housing's all welded out. Next step now, obviously I've gone along since it's fin I've finished welding it, I've gone along and I've just blended in all the stop starts, given it a quick wire wheel with the grinder, um, cleaned it all up and it's ready now to put the leaf spring pads on. So I've cleaned these up. I've die grinded one side more than the other, obviously because now the axle, the, the end on the housing, sorry, is a little bit um, larger in diameter than the um, axle tubes. So I've just compensated for that now. I'll get those dialed in. I'll get the um, pinion angle set, which was five degrees back. Um, I'll put the leaf spring pads on, try and get those all level. I'll tack them into place, make sure it's all 100%. Spin the diff housing around so that the pads are on the bottom, obviously, and then get to work in uh, welding that out. So I'll just give a quick look of the uh, diff housing, obviously. Welded up all sweet. Just blended those stop starts, like I said, give it a quick wire wheel come out really well so I'm happy with that I, thought I was going to TIG weld it but I didn't really want to have it too hot so um, and as you can see I've left the existing marks from the outside of the leaf spring pad as a reference and around this way like that and then you can see that that goes there you can see where I used the one mil to cut along there nicely with that weld um, and then I can get a nice weld in there now and um, Get them leveled up and welded out. 
Let's go. Well, the diff's all done, mostly anyway. I've just tacked the leaf spring pads into place. Um, and I also just quickly welded in a washer here as the hole was about, I don't know, 40 mil. And I'm getting rid of the rubbers that they come out with from the factory. Just gonna run that dead flat onto the leaf spring. And I've welded that up with a washer and it's gonna locate perfectly on those little spigots, which I'll show tomorrow in depth more. Um, for now, I've just got these tacked into place with the pinion angle set up on the bench. So tomorrow I'll look at putting this in the car, dummying it all up or pulling it probably all back out and um, buzzing back the housing, cleaning it up mint and giving it a fresh coat of paint and then putting it in the car for good. Obviously um, use a dummy process tomorrow to see how the car sits, if it's too low and if the wheels are too far back, which I think they're gonna be, I'll, um, I'll, I'll remove this and put this into a different spot, either move the hole back or forwards, obviously being leaf springs, once it's U-bolted through here, it's fixed, so if I've got to move the diff back or forwards, I'll do that tomorrow in the dummy process. So see you in the morning, it's nearly midnight and I've, it's been a big night, so pretty happy. Alrighty, day two back out in the shed. Um, one thing that I wanted to check was I needed to dummy assemble these axles quickly into the diff because I knew that I'd shortened it that far that the backing plates and the leaf spring pads were probably going to be an issue. So I'll turn the camera around and I'll run you through what I'm talking about. So I've just sat one axle in, I've already done the other side and trimmed it, I'll talk you through what I mean. So when you use these original Hilux axle bearing ends, you'll see that where the studs come through, the thread is just touching the leaf spring pad. The other side it had just a gap, so what I'm going to do is obviously sit the axles in. I'm going to trim back the thread so it just clears and maybe enough room just to get the nut through if I have to. But um, you can always feed the nut on first and then slide the axles in and still get them on. So no issues there. Just thought I'd touch on that if anyone has something similar um, and will notice that you can go this short and get away with it. Right, just finished trimming up those threads now. I'll just hold up the axle. You can see there's a nice gap there and enough thread to still grab the nut and probably have thread just hanging out the end. So what I'll do now is take the diff housing over to the car Get it over to the Mazda, I'll dummy assemble everything inside the car, get it up on wheels, lower it, see if I need to trim whatever I need to trim, and then move on to getting the diff painted and welding out the leaf spring pads properly. So after fitting the diff and dummying it up, I'm glad I did do it before I painted it because I did uh, come across a couple of issues that are something that's been in the back of my head until I've got the diff in the car did I really see what I was encountering? So, because I've shortened the diff so far, I could not get the U-bolt between here and have the bolts run through the back with a nut. The nut finishes right where the U-bolt was. So as you can see, I have got four brand new little 38 bolts, or M10 they are, and I've cut the heads off of them and I've plug welded them into the back of the diff. Um, is it the right thing? Look, really, it, it should have had a press stud fit, um, stud put through the back, but if it ever stuffs up, you're never getting it out anyway, unless you cut off the leaf spring pads. So I've had to clearance just, or just radius the tops of those um, end bearing caps. So I'll show you through this side, just to get the U-bolt through nicely. I've just done the sides that it runs along upwards and downwards, and then the radius, which is a bit sharp on the backing, I've just radiused that off with the die grinder nicely. And as you can see, the U-bolt fits in there nice without sitting right up. So just another little problem I've encountered along the way. And obviously you do have problems in uh, modifications with this shit. So anyway, back onto it. And as you can see, obviously, I'll just quickly climb underneath. The factory two mount studs go through the top. Absolutely no worries. And then the studs through the bottom, no longer getting in the way of the U-bolts. Absolutely sweet. Alrighty, the moment of truth. Car has all four wheels on it for the first time in, I don't know, 
I guess, a week. Um, a diff turnaround, I mean, it's probably been three days by the time I've shortened the housing and done the axles, they've had to be sent off to get re-splined or shortened and re-splined. So, um, yeah, got it back on all fours now. It's time to lower the jack and I guess see if this thing scrubs. I've spun the wheels in the air. Um, one side is just nipping the little nipples on the tyres. So I might have to hammer that in if I have to, but I haven't even trimmed back the um, factory wheel arch lips yet. So I was um, aiming to do that if I get the car down on all fours. I think it's sitting pretty low. So um, anyway, let's get into it. Wow, that looks heaps better. I mean, just a little bit better than the old speedies that were on it, but what a transformation. That looks absolutely amazing. A lot of people said that you couldn't really do it. I didn't. I wanted to get the wheels in as far as possible without having to chop the guards, and I think I've managed to achieve that, so I'm very happy. That looks nuts. Just needs a little bit of a wheel alignment now, obviously the front, and then um, we'll get the rear dialed in. It's just sitting there at the moment, still no diff center, so I've just got to pull the diff back out to finish painting it. It's all mocked up 100%, so, man, I'm happy with that. I think Lisa is gonna to be too. Diff housing all done, ready to go back in the car. Long weekend is a good opportunity to try and get some work smashed out. Um, so while I wheeled that whole thing, Lisa come out, gave it a quick coat of edge. We took it back to bare metal, obviously, smoothed out any old dags off of the housing, come up really good. So it's just acrylic satin black or like a semi-gloss. That's all done, ready to roll. Um, backing plates have just been cleaned up and put into a, a net etch primer as well. Got to put some new brake lines on the diff anyway, so they're just sitting in there. It's probably going to whip a bit of brake fluid. Um, while I was there, I also replaced all the bolts in the wheel cylinders as, I mean, the ones that were in it had three washers on each bolt. Well, I don't know why you wouldn't just get the right length bolt, cut them down, but anyway, potato. The other two had original ones in it, so just put two new stainless bolts in each ones with the new washers, and then that's another thing sorted. Diff center's been cleaned up. I've got all new actual seals to go in the ends, um, a new diff gasket and some oil. Um, we'll start banging this diff back in. We'll come over to the car, and last night I just bare metaled all of the lee springs as they were caked in some paint job that looked like a kid done it. Absolutely terrible, so they're just all being painted now. Um, again, just in an edge coated black for now. Looks heaps better. So, next thing is really getting the diff over here, putting it in the car. And then, the last thing I do want to do is clean up these just spring perches that go through the U bolts on the bottom of the diff. They're just all caked in shit. So, clean those up, get them painted, and then put this diff in.
Alrighty, just back out in the shed on this Sunday afternoon. Um, as you can see, got the Mazda up on the hoist. A little bit's been happening since the last little bit of um, recording I've done, so I'll spin the camera around and we can get into what we've been doing. So I've got the Mazda across onto the hoist. As you can see, diff is all back in. I've just finished cleaning up the drums and painted them. The diff is all back in and under, obviously, um, painted, cleaned it up, bare metaled it. Um, it's come up really good. All new brake lines, um, the brake lines that were on it looked like they were secondhand reused, so um, definitely none of that happening. Bent up some new ones, all new fittings. Um, just about to bleed the brakes, so I'll put the wheels back on. Um, obviously, I bare metaled all the leaf springs, have cleaned them right up, and slowly going through the car, I'm just going to do all new nuts and bolts wherever. Um, obviously, it looks heaps neater. Before it was all flaked, just had maybe a bit too many coats of paint on it, so. Clean that up, I've gone along, um, cleaned up all the handbrake cables there, actually going into the backing plates now, as they weren't even mounted, so um, handbrake will work. Diff center's all in and sealed up without a whole tube of silicon used to put it in. Um, what else? We've got the wheels back on. I'm just waiting on some center caps to come for the RCs um, and also some wheel nuts for the back. So for now, I'm just using the old style shitty chrome weld wheel nuts, but they'll get us by. Um, yeah, hopefully bleed up these brakes, the Savo, and then go through getting the brakes done and then see if we can maybe take it for a drive um, temporarily on this side underneath. The front wheel is way too close to this guard and I don't really want to chop the guard or cut it. So just for now, I've put an extra two spaces behind the sway bar rubber on the control arm. So that's moved the whole wheel back about 10, 15 mils. So that's good. Um, otherwise we can't drive it at all without the front wheels scraping and we can't have that. So yeah, just getting ready for a little drive um, and we'll run through some other things once it's back on the ground also. a bit more comfortable without me in the car I reckon. <laughs> Sounds bloody good too. Woo. All right guys back once again got to say pump the uh, progress over the last two weekends obviously last weekend I got the chance to finally put the diff in the Mazda um, and just tied up a few things car's been a real bitch to start lately as we found that the crank angle sensor wiring was tied into the same wiring and taped up as the coils um, and every now and then it would just drop spark um, it was a really pain in the ass to start and then once it was running it would just conk out um, and it was running like crap so went through that um, split all the wiring i'm still yet to obviously tie it all up and neaten it off but um running heaps better now um, and also obviously we just got the diffle back in um, bled the brakes up, all new brake lines, we'll run through it all. We'll have a little walk around and talk about the car. So all finished up for tonight, Sunday night. So just spent the weekend going over the car, um, sorting out all the little issues that are left to finish off. Um, I was short on some wheel nuts, so I had the open-ended ones on the front. 
I've now put them on the back and I had long shank ones left over. Um, for now, I've just trimmed them down to suit the front. Um, as I said, also still waiting on a RC center cap. I'm just gonna get a two inch one for that. But yeah, car's sitting mint. I just took it for a little drive. Brakes are good, bled them up, they come up nice. No more of that jolting issue, which was really bad before. Obviously the car was, when you're hitting the brakes, going back and forth quite bad, obviously with those drums. So welded up those drums and that is a lot better now too. So we just got back from a little drive before it starts pissing down. And um, that's the first drive that we've had or Lisa's has had of the car and it's already driving much better. So absolutely in love with it. So not long now until Rotary Revival, I'd like to get it back to Clinton who tuned the car and um, We'll up that rev limiter from five grand that it's at at the moment to I don't know about eight and a half. He's pretty confident that it'll go to, but as I said, this is well, this is an unknown motor. We don't know if it's built, the history, anything. So either did the previous owner, which was a bit useless to us. So we'll just drive it, put some K's on it for now, and uh, get it back to Clinton, and then go over the whole car. Really, just give it a good polish up and detail, and get it ready for rotary revival. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap the video up there. Once again, thanks for tuning in. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Keep up to date with all the videos. I've got a last few minute changes to make to the car with uh, just some cosmetic things. Fit up some badges. We'll give the car a polish, hopefully overall. It really needs a wet sand, but I don't know if I'll be able to fit that in within the next week or so as it needs to be done. Obviously pretty good. So um, in the meantime, we'll get the car ready to get back to Clinton's to dyno tune it like we spoke about and um, Lisa can put some kilometers on it and get it ready to take up to the bend. Hope to see you all there. Cheers.